On January 2017, Donald Trump became the 45th president of the United States. Mr. Trump, one of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. We're going to make them pay for that wall. Throughout his campaign, Trump made a name for himself as a bigoted businessman who had great plans to make America great again, but only for some. I got embarrassed by the awful, terrible, uh, even racist things that he says and does because he's appealing to a sector of the American public that enjoys his bullying, that enjoys his xenophobia and nationalism and that simply want him to be their bully. Today, we are not merely transferring power from one administration to another or from one party to another, but we are transferring power from Washington, D.C. and giving it back to you, the people. What began as a post on social media became what some consider to be one of the biggest protests in history. On that day, over 400,000 people gathered in New York City to protest. to a lot of things, women's rights being one of them, but amongst that, many other things like, uh, you know, gay lesbian rights and economy and hopefully he won't blow us all up. Three quarters of the American people did not vote for him. So there are a lot of people out there who already had questions about what he represented in terms of an elected, you know, president, but also people who question his policies, right? And who look at the American political system and begin to have a lot of serious reservations about how effective it is. And so since then, what people have begun to recognize is that the system, the mechanism, the political mechanism didn't work the way it was supposed to. So now people have to do what they can to protect themselves and protect our society from all the potential disasters that will happen because of the policies that he wants to advance. Social media has been a key factor in mobilizing protests since Trump's inauguration. People of all ages can voice their opinions on his policies on different types of platforms. Social media kind of like fire starts a lot of conversations to be happening about like issues that are going on or events in the world as well as like it helps that information be spread faster because like say there is something going on and thousands of people take to Twitter and start live tweeting about like oh this is going down here this is what's happening and it's like you're getting the raw unfiltered like news from that in a way. Uh, social media has made it more efficient to organize people but it is also in some ways um, limited political organizing because it makes it possible people to have um, communication, but not deep connections. And in order to really develop a movement, you have to have face-to-face -face contact and develop the connections that will make people um, devote themselves to a mission that may take a lot of sacrifice to accomplish. The Women's March was bigger than just the rights of women. It was for anyone who had issues with Trump's policies and administration. People from across the country came together to take action and show the world that changes need to be made. Whether it's women's rights, whether you're concerned about the issue of the black community and law enforcement, um, it's not that simple to just say we don't agree with the Trump administration. And so what does that messaging look like and how do you organize when people have different concerns, right? That's what I think we as a 
as a country needs to figure out. Because obviously something has happened that needs to be solved. And if women don't step up and we don't create equality for every single human being in this country and around the world, yeah, this world won't be what we want it to be. I don't have and if I don't teach that to my six-year-old, then I don't know who is. Living in critical times, more than ever, people need to rise up and demonstrate power. Despite the fact that Trump is in office, there needs to be a continuing effort of activism and resistance. This is really important, but oh, <laughs> the way that we're really going to make a difference isn't just here. We have to go to those rural areas and go to those boring press meetings with the local senators. And that's where we confront them. That is going to be our power, confronting them in their environment.